Hi, my name is Mitchell um, and welcome. I've just had the impulse to basically create a video sharing with you guys my experience preparing for my first ultramarathon, uh, specifically the 100km Topo Ultramarathon in New Zealand. Um, and yeah, the, the point of this video is just to share um, what, it's, what it's like to sort of train for your first ultramarathon um, some do's and don'ts around that, some useful resources, and yeah, just my own experience to hopefully help um, other people who are considering doing these kind of ultra endurance events um, to sort of help them understand what they'll be getting into and uh, why they should do it in the first place. So yeah, I'll just get started. I'll just start with my background. Um, so I've been running since the end of 2017, so that's around three years now uh, when I decided to do my ultra marathon uh, at the start of this year 2020 um, I'd be running I'd been running for just over two years so it's not a lot of time from me starting running properly to choosing to do my first ultra marathon and because of that obviously um, when I told friends and family I was gonna do it um, there's a bit of skepticism at first and that's completely normal and I can't blame them for that um, but yeah, if you do end up, you know, thinking that you want to do something similar, be prepared for um, people telling you that maybe you're not going to be ready for it and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, it's you who knows what you can do and what you're capable of. And um, yeah, if, if you know that you're fit and you've got the mental toughness to do something like this and you give yourself enough time to train, uh, you should be fine. Um, but yeah, obviously, if there is going to be some really bad physical issues um, that you're already going through, then it's probably not a great event uh, or sport to get into ultramarathon running. As a lot of runners say, trust the process. Um, so yeah, you, you ideally want a couple of years of history with running behind you. Um, prior to entering this 100k ultramarathon, I'd run... A, five half marathons but never a full marathon so that's that's also a source of a lot of, a lot of the skepticism and um, we've yet to see if the skeptics are right because the marathon the ultra marathon I'm running is in actually is actually in two weeks now so yeah so that's just a bit of background on um, my running experience and what it was like to tell people I was going to do it um, I'm just going to quickly go over why I chose to do it I'd just been hearing about it um, a lot in a short space of time through like podcasts and then I discovered a guy called David Goggins, um, this guy here, and uh, like reading his book and learning about this guy like really changed the way I viewed my own running trajectory um, and it just hearing about the ultramarathon experiences he's been through and the sort of wisdom that gives you, um, that was really appealing to me. and. Yeah, I, I kind of want to push out of that comfort zone of running half marathons to do something that's, um, I guess, more what I'm capable of doing, more fulfilling more of my potential, I guess. So yeah, um, discovering David Goggins really did, and other people as well, but um, it was reading his book that really um, pushed me to, you know, evaluate, like, how far I'm actually pushing myself and you know, like how much can I push myself? So that's kind of why I chose to enter the ultramarathon as well. And that's why I'll continue doing ultramarathons of greater distances if this one goes all right. right. But hopefully it should. So in terms of like useful resources for people starting to get into ultra running, um, there's a few good books out there. The one I've read is, uh, I believe it's Hal Kerner's Alt, uh, Field Guide to Ultra Running. It's like one of the most popular ones. So if you just search Field Guide to Ultra Running, you'd find that on Google. I, I listened to it on, on Audible when I was running, so yeah, that was actually a good productive use of my running time to listen to how to how to train for an ultra marathon. Um, so yeah, that, that book's got a lot of really good advice. It covers basically everything uh, you need to know about running an ultra marathon. But yeah, some of the key takeaways I took from that is that fueling is important. Um, so with regard to fueling then, what I've, what I did during my training was to sort of practice with these energy gels. So basically these energy gels, um, not this brand in particular, but any energy gel uh, that's designed for sports, 
they're like a um, highly dense um, caloric intake um, which allows you to like quickly eat something and then keep going um, and you're supposed to take one of these every one well one or two of these every hour uh, approximately and um, that's just one source of fueling you can have whole foods as well um, not that I've really experimented with that yet but um, they usually provide like good whole foods on the course um, of your ultra marathon so just make sure you know what kind of foods they're providing and make sure you've got your own nutrition that you've um, practiced with and that you trust um, and speaking of nutrition there's also hydration obviously um, hydration is obviously really important um, but so is making sure that you don't overhydrate. Um, so I think one of the key t tips of advice there that I've sort of picked up on as well is to just um, drink to thirst. So that basically means um, only only drink when you feel you have to. Uh, obviously, don't push that rule too too far, otherwise you get dehydrated. But you don't want to get overhydrated because that can lead to some serious problems as well. And in fact. I believe it's a statistic somewhere that more people um, get overhydrated than dehydrated during a run, or maybe it's more people get injured that way. Um, so yeah, be really cautious of that when you're training. Um, to help with hydration, actually, there are these um, these race packs, um, like hydration vests. You can put water bottles in here, and you can also put your energy sources in there. And these are really great. Um, they're not cheap, so like, but neither is ultra running. So you've got to really commit to um, entering the race and then buying all the gear you'll need. But um, it's definitely going to make your race experience a lot better to have one of these. Um, and just you know, you have 500 ml flasks in each one, and um, yeah, that 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 does you for every hour or two hours basically. So yeah, the the general rule I've been told is drink. Um, some water, 500 mils of water every hour. So, speaking of gear, you obviously need uh, running shoes, but in particular, trail running shoes. Um, if you don't have trail running shoes, I'd highly recommend getting them if you're gonna be running on a trail for your ultra marathon. And that's because they have um, this really hard toe box at the front, or that most of them should do. Um, they're waterproof, basically. Uh, most of them should be waterproof, and the tread is really good. Um, as you can see, there's not much space for mud to get in as opposed to like a typical running shoe that has that sort of area there where mud can get in and reduce your traction. These are built specifically for trails and for muddy um, situations. And all around they just allow you your, your um, ankles to twist a little bit easier um, as, as they will be on the trails without you getting injured. Uh, whereas running shoes with support um, for stability, they can really mess up your ankles if you go on too many uneven surfaces surfaces with them. Another piece of gear you might want, you might need is a headlamp, head torch. Um, again, these aren't exactly cheap, but definitely worthwhile picking up, especially a high powered one if you're gonna be running at night, and that's fairly obvious. You can also use handheld torches, but I prefer a head one just because you don't have to worry about using your hands with anything like that. So um I think it's it's pretty worthwhile to invest in some decent socks um, and that kind of when I was told this I thought it sounded stupid as well um, because it's like what difference will socks make but it turns out over a distance like 100 kilometers it actually does make a big difference um, especially in terms of uh, moisture wicking and stuff so that's why going for something like a, um, a merino wool uh, will really help you and yeah making sure the the toes are um, cushioned and yeah it's just breathable so that so that you can avoid getting blisters I guess um, also if you're running in like pretty thick trails you might want to get like longer socks rather than ankle socks just to uh, protect protect your legs from potential scrapes and other nasty things that can happen that can it won't, won't ruin your race but it'll just um, might be a minor annoyance that can compound over like a time period of 10 hours which is probably how long you'd be running if you do a 100 kilometer or maybe longer than that so yeah now so now that we've covered gear um, again
again, it's all a, it's all a matter of trial and error with gear. Uh, you've got to pick what works for you. I've just shown you the things that work with me. Um, but yeah, like I learned all this stuff from that uh, field running ultra field guide to ultra running. So definitely check that out if you want to look more into gear and stuff. Um, so quickly, I'll just go over the training sessions I've done. Um, now I'm not a coach, and I probably could have benefited from coaching in this, but um, this is just a purely experiential point of view. So again, I'm not a scientist. I don't know everything there is. Um, so yeah, take take this advice with that in mind, um, if if you can even call it advice. Um, yeah, so I was running. I've been running every day since last October, which is probably not ideal uh, in terms of recovery and that sort of thing. Um, so I did that for a separate reason, so I can talk about that another time. Um, but basically I'd make sure that even if I was running every day, some days would be shorter and slower than others, and some days would be faster or longer than others. Um, so it averaged out to around 100 kilometers a week. Um, with my long runs being 30 to 35 kilometers per go. Um, and for me, that was kind of a good spot for me. Um, and that's because, because I was going a decent speed um, and I was going a decent distance. So my thinking is that when you go, say, five kilometers an hour for 30 kilometers, you can potentially double that distance by you know, reducing your speed, um, not by halving your speed, but like by going six kilometers an hour. So that's kind of how I've done my training. I don't know if that's going to work yet. We will see. Uh, but if it does, then we can look back on this video and say, wow, Mitchell is a smart guy. Um, so yeah, all in all, I just kind of created this video to see, to test myself on how prepared I am for this, um, as well as to share my experience training for my first ultra marathon. This is a purely amateur's point of view. Um, and to sort of hopefully encourage some of you guys to consider, you know, doing something like this, even if you've only done half marathons. Obviously it's a big commitment, um, but I, I, I truly believe the reward you get out of it um, far surpasses those two hour training runs. You know, it's, um, if it's something you want to do, you you'll be able to do it. Okay, it's like that's the end of the that's the end of the story there. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I'm sorry if I rambled a bit, um, but yeah, look forward to more videos. Um, potentially a debriefing after my hundred kilometer race, depending on how well that goes. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.